Hey, 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 we are here with another podcast from the Sprout Mission, episode two, okay? And we have a lovely, lovely guest, and this guest is Yasmin De Giorgio. She's a friend of mine, um, uh, a person that I've worked with also, and uh, she's a very, very inspirational woman. But um, uh, let's go ahead and say hi to Yaz. Hi, Yaz. Hey, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how are you? I am very, very good. I see you are in your office over there. I am live from Sanya. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so let's get to the interview that we have prepared, okay? So first I want to start with a quote which you like. And I'm going to say, the purpose of life is... Should I cut this? No, not at all. Go. I mean, I could fill in the blanks, but you seem like you have something ready to... No, this is, I got it off. It's, it's a quote that you like. Ah, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. Yes. All right. Amen. See, I never look at my own website. That's from my website. Yes. Um, and uh, quickly, quickly, I mean, I wanted to find some juice, you know, to make it as uh, juicy as possible. And your website, the first thing that popped out, I'm like, yes, by the way, like, you know, it's a very, very, um, uh, who you, what, what you've taught me. <laughs> I mean, I came to the Grassy Hopper when it was my, I, I, it was like, for sure, this will be the last catering establishment that I will work in. You know, with, I came with that attitude and uh, I came with the attitude of working in hospitality industries in in London, in Libya. So, and I also did some catering in Argentina, but when I came there and to start working with you, yes, it was uh, a total different story. Like it was, uh, it was so fulfilling and uh, I did 14 years in catering. I, I never grasped the the beauty of service I, it was so much like you know fast pace fast pace fast pace but let, let's like probably you'll deliver some of your of your wisdom nuggets later on into this um, uh, um interview so yes the Giorgio, who are you how old are you etc <laughs> so i'm 31 um uh... I'm obviously a woman, <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur, um, so I'm currently running um, Sanya, which is my second company, but sort of third brand that I've developed over the past five years, okay. and all my businesses have been focused on wellness of the people that they serve, uh, so obviously the clients, um, I always start with what is not being provided to the client that they need to live a healthy and happy life. Mm -hmm. But then also, like, how can I create a company in a way that is also healthy and happy for the people that's working in it? So, okay, um, yeah, that you were fulfilled. <laughs> at yeah. the offer. Yes, um, I was. Uh, but wait a sec, what is your hobby? I mean, I have many hobbies. Of surfing is probably up there, number one. Um, yeah. But I also love, I love reading. I'm a big reader. I read a lot. Um, I love learning. Um, I'm also a yoga and meditation teacher and that's mm -hmm. you know, a very big part of my life um, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be able to it's, it's one thing having a philosophy it's very mm -hmm. easy for people to have a philosophy it's mm -hmm. another whole different thing to live a philosophy mm -hmm. um, you know, people say you know things like love you know I believe in love yeah great but when someone hurts you mm -hmm. can you still give love that's a whole different um, question yeah. So, you know, without my sort of spiritual practice and that side of my life, then the Grassy Hopper philosophy would never really have existed. And I definitely wouldn't have, even if I had the idea, I wouldn't have managed to actually put it into practice over years. Yeah, it would have crumbled down, eh? Definitely. No, yes, it's true, it's true. All right, so how did you get started as an entrepreneur? What did you so, study? How did you get here? Um, I studied economics and management, um, but as much as it was a good course, um, I don't really feel like I actually learned anything about entrepreneurship or business. I mean, economics is you know, very much the theory of how economies work, but not how to run a business at all. 
Okay. Um, and after a time, after I did my master's, which was in politics and specifically in the politics of poor countries and why they're still poor, mm -hmm. I got very disillusioned with e economics um, okay. because I felt like um, in economics, they're called negative externalities, which are basically the negative effects that a business has, things like pollution, you know, causing stress to people or whatever. Um, and one of the famous things, you know, in economics is that these negative externalities are not counted for. For example, if a company dumps all of its toxic waste into a river, the cost of that damage to the river, to the planet, is not doesn't show anywhere on their balance sheet or their profit and loss account. Mm. Um, so I, I became quite... Um, a bit pissed, to be honest, if I can use that word on your lovely podcast. Yes, <laughs> about it. There's no censors. There's no censorship. <laughs> I was very angry and I was trying to tell anyone who'd listen how unfair economics is and how, you know, trade agreements just, you know, really screw over poor countries. And I was very anti-establishment at that time. And I think the thing that bothered me the most was that I was never even taught this in my economics classes, you know. Yes. <laughs> so it's kind of like the secret history of economics, you know, which luckily nowadays, you know, people are a lot more aware of the dark side of business, you know, mm -hmm. thanks to documentaries and the internet and all of that. Um, but at this time in my life, I just said, you know, I'm out, I'm not, I don't want to have anything to do with this kind of destruction. Mm -hmm. Became a hippie, went traveling, you know, was kind of floating around. <laughs> um, and then at a point, I sort of got very curious as to human potential. Like I said, okay, I'm a human being on this planet, but there are some human beings who have really excelled at, you know, not just their thinking and the success that they have, but as people, like they're more loving, they're more compassionate, they're more service driven, they have more energy. Like, and I got really curious, like how do people do that? Because I want to do that. Um, and that's what took me more into the world of self-development, meditation, and, and these kind of things. Um, and I sort of came full circle to realizing, like, okay, if I want to change the world, which, you know, all people in their 20s who want to change the world. <laughs> uh, I said, okay, well, then I have to really change business because business is, you know, what we spend most of our days doing, you know. Even if you're anti-business, you can't escape business. You know, I still drove a car, I still flew on planes, you know, I still walk loads. So um, I said, okay, I need to take these philosophies of interconnectedness and love that I had discovered um, through meditation and try to find a way to create a business that would reflect those. And I actually started joining someone else's business. Um, and sort of accidentally after about a year, I'm, I'm quite a headstrong person. I like to do things my way. <laughs> <laughs> and it sort of got to the point uh, within this other business that I said, okay, I, I think I want to try to do things 100% my own way. And I had a friend who just sort of popped in um, and said, listen, I'm selling this kiosk. Uh, would you be interested? And it was exactly around this time where I said, okay, I need to do my own thing. And I just went for it basically um i didn't even see this thing it was in the uk um and i just bought this <laughs> two-ton trailer and had it shipped to malta and i i created a menu and and that's how the grassy hopper was born okay. in a way sort of accidentally i never set out to be in catering or or really even to start a business that's amazing so the grassy hopper was your first so Okay, um, uh, and then the grasshopper led you to, do you want to maybe go to um, uh, what lessons you've learned through the grasshopper and then from grasshopper to the other businesses? Because you can carry on mentioning the other business and then we can, in a nutshell, say what you've learned through where you stand now, till, till you know what I mean? Um. I can, I can just say a little bit about that period and then we can kind of move on to the next okay. one. Um, so Grassy, it's been just over five years now. Um, I expanded the business quite quickly, you know, went from a kiosk to having two cafes, which then became two cafes and a chocolate shop. Um, it was an amazing challenge for me. Um, I call it a hero's journey. <laughs> if, if anyone listening hasn't heard that term, I really advise you to Google it because there's a lot of psychological wisdom in, in that framework um, and I always sort of had this sense that you know in life you need to be challenged just past your comfort zone 
and if you're sort of in your comfort zone your life gets a bit stale you don't want to be challenged too much that you're breaking down but you want to kind of have that sweet spot where you're being challenged just enough to grow as a person mm-hmm. and i think that um is what grassy did for me i was extremely challenged by a lot of different things that happened within the five years um, some of the ones that come to mind are at the top of my head are one having such a big team like we grew to 30 staff um, at a point and my vision was always to have a conscious business and to have a very specific way that the staff would be in that community mm-hmm. um, and I found that very hard when it got to the point of 30 people um, especially in catering where you have high staff turnover um, I wanted to create a team of people that were committed to their self-development, that wanted to grow with the company, that wanted to serve. Um, and when you sort of lose a chef and you suddenly have to hire a new chef, it's not very easy <laughs> to be choosy and say, okay, I want a chef who's also, you know, going to meditate and going to want to come to staff meetings. I don't want to communicate and share his life and, and all of these other things. So I found it very challenging to sort of keep that culture, which we had, you know, when you first joined the team, when the team was only, you know, five, six people, mm-hmm. and then keep that culture when it grew to such a big team was extremely challenging for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think I ever really figured out how to do that, honestly speaking. Um, mm-hmm. And in fact, that's why at a point I decided to scale down the business. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Some of the challenges, I think, obviously, as a leader, you always have to learn how to manage people, um, uh, how to get the best out of them, and also how to deal with your own disappointments when people let you down. uh, Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to become cynical and saying, oh, you know, I was let down, I'm not going to trust anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, going back to this philosophy that I, I came and said, you know, I want to create a business which is reflecting my values. Okay. My values weren't don't trust people and don't have your heart open. So, mm-hmm. you know, I had these values, but then I was tested by the situation. So say, okay, well, <laughs> all right, you believe in forgiveness, but now you're really hurt. Can you still forgive? Mm-hmm. And, and if I didn't have those moments that really hurt me, my sort of forgiveness muscle wouldn't have had to grow to be able to stretch and forgive things that maybe at that time was quite difficult for me to forgive. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think, um, you know, challenged my leadership very much. Um, mm. I still feel on some level that I never really um, figured out exactly how to make Grassy the best that it could be. Um, I think catering is quite a broken model, uh, being honest with you. I mean, the mm. catering model as it is was developed for very low cost food and uh, food which didn't take a lot of preparation. Mm. Uh, and when you come into an, into a business and say, okay, I want to take this you know, catering business model and now I want to make it healthy. Mm. But you have higher food costs and higher wage costs and people still want to say, pay the same amount for the food. Mm. Um, it's very challenging and there's a big education process which you need to educate people on why things are more expensive and why things are done in a different way. And education itself costs money too. Mm-hmm. So... Um, uh, in fact, you know, then when I sort of started Sanya and my vision, I found that I could sort of manifest the fullness of what I wanted to give to the world, not just through food, but through many different other things. Okay. And then I said, okay, maybe this is a model that um, sort of matches more with who I am as a person, who I've become, and the real things that I want to create in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I was going to tell you, it wasn't just a good beetroot burger or a chickpea burger that we were serving but there was beyond the food it was beyond just serving food and you said it yourself and now we arrived at Sanya and uh, also what um, it's not just who you are I wanted to interview you but also where you have arrived at Sanya and uh, and uh, how you're serving people and as you said you you managed to now um, uh, connect your purpose and everything to, and Sanya is the vehicle which is uh, helping you so Sanya how was it created what was the idea behind it so I'm never sure when people ask me this if I should say the true story or not <laughs> because the true story is a bit uh, interesting <laughs> but uh, I think I can tell you the true story because you'll, you'll understand it for sure <laughs> um, uh, so Obviously, after a few years of grassy, I already had in my mind that I want to help people beyond just food. 
mm-hmm. you know, my own life changed through not just food, food was the starting point, but then it, the evolution continued through other means. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I always had this idea, like I'd love a bigger space, you know, where I can do more kind of events and uh, different kinds of classes. And uh, two, more than two years, well, two and a half years ago, uh, it was my birthday, and I have a big affinity with Gozo. Um, I was born in Gozo, and I really love Gozo. Um, and funnily enough, um, uh, sort of my spiritual journey, um, even though I follow, you know, maybe yoga, meditation, traditions, which are not our culture here, sort of the more I meditated and the more I sort of had an experience of God, the closer it got me to my own religion, which before I, I could say I didn't really understand. And maybe I still don't really fully understand. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I know is that, you know, when I went to places in Gozo, like Tapinu, for example, I felt a very strong connection to the divine. Mm-hmm. And around the time of my birthday, I said, okay, I'm going to go to Gozo and I'm going to go to Tapinu and I'm going to meditate there and I'm going to go for, you know, walk up the hill opposite Tapinu and um, just some different places in Gozo where I feel connected and sort of can replenish my soul. And when I was there, I had a very strong spiritual experiences um, where I felt very, very connected um, I don't even want to detail it because I think it sort of retracts from it, you know, whether you can say it's Mother Maria or the Divine Mother or whatever, God in whatever form, I just felt very overcome by this energy of I want to serve this island. I love this island. This is my roots. Um, And I believe in us as Maltese people. I believe in this island. You know, some Maltese people are like, sort of we denigrate ourselves quite a lot Mm -hmm. Um, but I was just you know wow I love this country and I I remember praying and saying God I'm ready to serve I'm ready to do whatever it is that you think is the best that I have to offer no matter how painful that may be no matter what it would demand of me I offer myself wow Um, I didn't really think too deeply about it honestly it was just a feeling and that was it, you know, I had, a, it was a nice weekend and I, I felt very connected and, and good and I came home. <laughs> Basically about a week later, I got a call from Alan who runs the gym next door, who at the time I didn't know, I had never met. And he called me and he said, listen, um, I run this gym in Nashar. Um, I think uh, it was actually through one of the Grassy Hopper team that he had found me. And he said, um, I want you to do a juice bar next to my gym. Can you come and see this place? And at the time, you know, expanding Grassy Hopper and having another outlet when I was already sort of challenged with, you know, how big the business had already grown was the last thing on my mind. And mm-hmm. mostly I say no to these kinds of things. But for some reason I said, okay, why not? I'll just go and see the space. And I came down and I walked into what is now Sanya, and which is a very huge space. It's um, really massive. Um, you know, there's an indoor pool, sauna, steam room. It's, it's, you know, a whole spa. Um, and he said, they're going to open a spa here, but this corner, you can have a small juice bar here. And me being a bit mad, <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do a juice bar when whoever's running the spa doesn't match my values because most spas in Malta are not run really, I can say, with a heart-centered approach to healing and wellness. It's more of a factory come in, come out, you know, the, the masseuses who work, they're often exploited, they're often from Asia or Eastern Europe, not paid well, and it's a factory line. They do nails, which is very toxic to the, to the body. And I said, Alan, you know, I'm not going to do a juice bar in, when someone's running the spa, not in a holistic way. I said, either I do nothing or I do, do it all. And he, I just laughed, you know, it was kind of a joke. <laughs> And then I walked out and I started thinking about all the things I could do there, you know, and I remembered this prayer that I said just like one week before, you know, like, so yeah. show me what you want me to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it felt like a bit too coincidental. Um, then I sort of had a, a bit of a freak out and I said, what am I doing? You know, I already have like my plate is full, you know, this is the last thing I need is more pressure and more this and more that. And so I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. Um, 
but you know this voice in my head and in my heart kind of kept ringing you know it's mm -hmm. like you just prayed a week ago and you said specifically no matter how hard and all my objections were i don't want the pressure i don't want the stress i don't want to take yeah. this on my shoulders you know um but i had said it just one week before you know no matter how hard i want to serve this island um so here I am, <laughs> two years later, <laughs> and Sanya was born. Um, and it was born, you know, out of Grassi and the lessons that I learned there. Mm -hmm. um, but with a vision that is expanded from mm -hmm. um, what Grassi um, started as. So that is amazing. I'm very glad that you said the truth <laughs> and the whole version because it's beautiful when you. Um, uh, trust stay and uh, and when you come from a place that you want to serve you know what i mean because we were created to serve you know and everyone serves in one way or another you know even if you are uh, an owner of a business you are serving or you know in one way or another you are serving and uh, so what is your business philosophy and uh, where did you get your knowledge to sort of um, what are your points of guidance that you use? Like, like, for example, a daily mantra, let's put it that way, that you wake up to, you put your feet in your slippers and you say, this is the purpose. You know what I mean? What is the business philosophy that you carry on and makes it sustainable? for Malta, the planet, and your staff, et cetera, et cetera, your employees, your team? Um, so my, my philosophy is obviously service. Um, you said it, and I believe it 100%, that the key to a happy life is a life of service. Um, and Sanya, for me, is my way of serving people's wellness. Um, and for me, I think the three main sort of branches of that are one, physical health, health of our body, um, uh, second is health of our mind, peace of mind. And the third is that love and connection, um, which I was actually listening to a podcast this morning and it was talking about a study done um, uh, where these rabbits were fed two different, sorry, the same diet. And some of the rabbits were like given love and connection and petted and, and the other rabbits were just kind of left alone. And the scientists found like the state of their heart and the blood flow in the arteries was much better of these rabbits. And that's where given love. Um, and mm -hmm. these are nutritionists basically who are kind of trying to decide what's the healthiest diet. And <laughs> basically the healthiest diet is love and, and connection. So wow, you just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> it is so uh -huh, amazing. Uh -huh. Continue, sorry. So, I think those are the three pillars of what we try to give our clients, health of body, health of mind, health of spirit, you could say. Okay. Um, uh, and for me, I think the thing that we don't have, because all entrepreneurs want to see like what's missing, what are we missing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're living at a time where more people are dying from being obese than from being too thin. Mm -hmm. And more people are dying from suicide and that are being killed in wars, terrorists, and criminals combined. Wow, that's that. Um, uh, yes, it's very, very shocking and very, very sad, you know, to think that there are so many humans taking their life, you mm. know, because of a lack of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I think most people would agree that we're living in a time which is very stressful. Mm. Um, you know, our bodies are getting physically stressed by the food that we're eating and uh, the lack of sleep. Um, chemicals in our environment etc but also our minds are very stressed by multitasking smartphones wi-fi radiation stress and um, this feeling of, that social media gives us that we're not good enough and we don't have enough impact we don't have enough reach we're just not enough basically mm -hmm. and say is what social media is one of the main <laughs> side effects mm -hmm. um and then again, you know, lack of love and connection, even though we're more connected uh, through the internet, people mm -hmm. have less connection and less deep relationships mm -hmm. with themselves and with others uh, in their life. So for me, I think a big part of that can come down to this one root cause, which is that we look outside of ourselves for happiness. Mm -hmm. And our, our mantra at Sanya is go within. 
because I really believe that if you go within yourself, uh, you will find so many answers. And we actually have a lot of wisdom within ourselves, but we don't take the time to listen because we're constantly distracted. Mm -hmm. Distracted by our news feed, distracted by what other people are telling us. Mm -hmm. Podcasts, there are millions. YouTube videos, there are millions. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to listen to others. Mm -hmm. And it's much harder, actually, to just quieten the mind and go within ourselves. Um, and even if you want to bring spirituality into that, you know, if you want to, you know, the God word is very controversial in this time, you know, because yeah. people feel like God is a scary word, but this is the truth that. If you want to have a relationship with a higher power to yourself than yourself, you need to listen within your soul because God, we speak to God through our heart, not yeah. through Facebook and not through Instagram. So we need to go within, you yeah. know, I think, as I said, all the problems of physical health, mental health and love and connection can all be fixed by going into ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need help we need support to do that it's yeah. Yeah. funnily enough much easier to travel to every country on this planet than to travel into the depths of your own self um uh, so this is what sanya is about we're about supporting people to really go within and see what changes they need to make support them to make those changes and we know that when people do this they feel mm -hmm. happy they feel healthy and most importantly they have purpose and if you wake up every day in your life with purpose that is the recipe for long life not a vegan diet not a gluten-free diet not a sugar-free diet not the best diet on the planet cannot give you what waking up every day and feeling wow this day is meaningful for me my life is meaningful mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean you need to be an entrepreneur you can be a mother yeah. And if for you, you know that bringing up your child to be a, a loving human being is your mission, it's your service, Yeah. beautiful, but wake up every day, not resisting it and not saying, oh, we have to drive her to ballet, or should we, I have to get stuck in traffic. No, like this is meaningful for me. So even if I have to drive two hours in traffic to take her to a ballet lesson, I'm going to enjoy every minute because it's my choice and my purpose. Mm -hmm. And that purpose and being of service is going to give me back a hundred million times over. So mm -hmm. that's a big mission that we have. <laughs> Yes, no, I know, and uh, you you were you were peeking on that that yes that I know and I remember when you the wisdom starts coming out and you're very blessed because it's a gift that God has given you and you are using it very 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 well. So Sanya, what does it offer to the people out there? And um, does it do you offer to business entrepreneurs that want to make the shift? and uh, be more um, uh, create like share the same philosophy like yours do you also create what type you mentioned classes what classes do you do um uh, what do you, how do you, uh, apart how from <laughs> apart of the spa and uh, and the yoga classes what else do you so sort of the base of what we've been doing for the past two years is just, you know, giving people time to come to the spa and relax, have their massages and treatments, different kinds of therapies to make the body healthy. Um, obviously yoga and meditation classes. Um, uh, but now um, what I'm trying to do is because I, I was really asking myself this question over the last few months, which is how can I best serve people? Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that I can best serve people by them just coming randomly for a spa day or a massage. I mean, it's okay. great that they do that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, but what I'm developing at the moment and what we're going to be launching hopefully in probably end of January um, okay. is more programs to help people. All right. Um, uh, so seven day programs and 30 day programs to give people an experience okay they can be supported to change their lifestyle okay right? because change needs to be consistent for a few days or weeks so that it becomes your new normal okay so that's what we're trying to do the first one we're gonna do is specifically for stress so how to manage stress so okay you can come commit to a seven day program or even better a 30 day program okay um, uh, and what we will do in that program is give you an experience and give you the knowledge so that you can sustain a stress-free okay. life or a, or a healthier life. Okay, so you'll give out like a protocol of what they need to do into this during this 30 day. 
yes, exactly. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff is obviously here at Sanya, so they need to come and do certain things with us. Okay. Um, and then they have obviously some things that they need to tweak in their routines at home um, and just giving them the knowledge and inspiration and support to do that because a lot of people want to make change in their life and mm. a lot of people don't manage and then they beat themselves up and they say, oh, I'm not good, I'm lazy, I'm this, I'm that. And Mm. obviously the more you speak to yourself in that way the harder it is to wake up in the morning if you're already in your mind telling yourself i'm lazy mm -hmm. now how, how are you going to wake up the next day and not be lazy you know you're just going to yeah. keep repeating the pattern yeah. um, but the problem it's not our fault really that we have mm. this you know it's the way our lives are set up is the part of least resistance is what will follow you know and unfortunately mm. that part of least resistance is often the unhealthy part so mm -hmm. we kind of help people to make the part of least resistance also the healthy and you know mm -hmm. sense of option that's going to create a better life for them no um, amazing yes um i'm also starting to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with people oh it's going to be sorry to, that is going to be all in-house are you getting someone to join or it's you going to deliver these programs or you have you've done some collaboration um, with other so like the majority will be in house. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know me, I like to do things my way. <laughs> we do have some um, people within our team um, who will contribute their their area of expertise. You know, okay. uh, different kinds of naturopaths or therapists or whatever who can okay. help. Um, uh, but I will be the main coordinator of, of these programs to oversee and make sure that it's being done in, in a way that matches our philosophy at Sanya. Uh, because, you know, humans, we all have our own philosophy. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm very particular about the kind of message um, that I want to share with people. Well done, well done. I don't know if you want to mention something else that's in the pipeline. I, I obvious, obviously, the people that are hearing are going to hear this in February 2019. So. Yeah. If it's already a month yes. and if you're starting in January, this thing, yes. is yes. there something else in the pipeline that you want to um, I think I just mentioned that I'm sort of offering like wellness mentoring, basically sessions, um, mm -hmm. because I'm trying to, I'm basically creating a sort of curriculum, um, mm -hmm. which I'm going to deliver to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, to try and help them again. Um, work on these three areas of their life um, mm -hmm. i believe a lot in one-on-one -on -one coaching um, and i i have coaches myself more than one that you know can give me feedback in different areas of my life mm -hmm. and i think you know the intelligent question to ask when you're trying to achieve any goal is not how can i do this but who can help me do it mm -hmm. when we ask how we don't know and we have to experiment and we have to fail and that takes a lot of time yeah and the efficient way is say, who can help me do this? Who's done this before? Who can show me the way and guide me and support me and make sure that I don't make every single mistake that they had to make? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of like, um, I like to use this metaphor of the sitar. The sitar has um, many, many frets and you can change the frets, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the scales on a sitar are infinite. Okay. Now, if you come to the sitar as a beginner and you want to try to learn how to play the sitar, you have to move every single fret, you know, a millimeter, and see if it sounds good, and then move it again, and, and try to figure out what sounds good. When the sitar has been being played for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and people have already gone through this process, I'm gonna tell you, here's the scale, here's the setting, put your frets like this, okay. and then the sitar is gonna sound great. So why would you <laughs> start from the beginning and not use the knowledge of all these people who have come It's true, it's true. Um, Are you playing the sitar? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> or your sister is. Uh, no, my sister doesn't play it either. Okay. I mean, you can take this to any instrument, really and truly. Yes, yes, yes. The piano, you know, you can figure out which chords sound good, or you can say, "Listen, this is C, this is F, this is G." Yes. Basically, it's like this. You have a harmony. You know? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just asking because you mentioned the the sitar. Yeah, no, I wish I had time to learn the sitar, but uh, not quite. <laughs> It will come, it will come if you want to. Um, uh, to wrap it up, um, books. Top three books. That's a hard one because I have a lot of books Love. that I love. Um, I think my favorite book of all time is probably not the most readable book because it's a bit of a philosophy complex book, um, but it's called A Brief History of Everything by Ken Wilber. Not mm -hmm. the Bill Bryson because a lot of people come 
confused, the similar titles. Ken Wilber, anything by him, actually, is really good. Okay. Um, a second book is one I've read recently. Um, it's, a, again, a bit of an uh, odd title, um, but it's called The Guru Question. Um, and it's all about having a sort of spiritual teacher or spiritual mentor in your life, um, which, you know, I think for us is a bit of a taboo subject. You know, we live in a time where everyone's like, be your own guru, like only listen to yourself. And um, again, you know, I'm a big believer in getting advice and mentors from people who have, you know, crossed rivers you haven't crossed yet. Uh, so that's a nice one. And third, something related to business. Thank you. Um, an amazing book about business called Minding Your Business. Okay. Um, that's a really, I cannot recommend it enough. That's what inspired me mostly to really create my philosophy. Uh, mm -hmm. He talks there a lot about service. Um, it was written by a guy who started a company called Aveda, um, which is a very famous cosmetics company. Um, they were the first organic cosmetics company. Um, doing hair products and this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was actually the first person to give intellectual property rights to a tribe in the Amazon for the, um, their recipes, which he then used in, I think it was in a specific shampoo or, or whatnot. Wow. Um, so he's very sustainable in his approach and he, he has this philosophy of, you know, the interconnectedness of the world and how our business should be sort of reflecting our responsibility to all the people that our business touches. Um, and I think if, if anyone listening to this wants to get into business or is in business, this mm -hmm. book is a must read for sure. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yes, this has been a beautiful time spent together. And um, thank you listeners that you have um, uh, been with us. I encourage you to share this and uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank yes. You. Always a pleasure. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>